Hey everyone, I'm your host Marcus Norman of Gentleman Style Podcast Show. And today we are going to be talking about my favorite topic, podcasting and blogging and YouTube and TikTok, Twitter and all of it above. And today I am bringing to the stage this incredible speaker, this powerhouse man who is actually making a living podcasting and blogging. So stay tuned, stay with us as we dive into this man's journey, this incredible speaker coming to the stage as we discuss how he did it and see if we can get him to spill the tea. Here we go. your host Marcus Norman of Gentleman Style Podcast Show and today I have coming to the stage Mr. Chris Miles this man is a fellow podcast host and I am so lucky to have him here on the show we're going to talk about my favorite topics here blogging website design investing podcasting and how he and his family were able to take their game to the next level and he was actually able to leave corporate America. He's going to share some insights and some secrets and some tips and a little sneak peek into his life, into how he paid off debt and providing as a father and providing for his family. Another key success of overcoming the struggles and making changes on, on, on taking that leap of faith into full-time entrepreneur and full-time blogger. And also another unique tip going full-time and ditching his nine to five. That's a whole conversation in itself. And I can't wait to dive in with Mr. Chris Miles. So help me welcome. Without further ado, I can't hold this man back any further. Help me welcome Chris Miles. Hello, hello. What's going on, Marcus? Thanks for having me on, man. Thank you for joining us on the Gentleman Style Podcast Show. I'm so happy to have you, brother. This is dope. Glad to have you here. What you been up to, man? Working hard? Surviving, man. Surviving. <laughs> <laughs> for <laughs> real. Trying to, uh, trying to live the dream, you know, trying to live the dream. What, what, what can I say? Well, wish How about it yourself? was a dream. Wish it was a dream. I'm doing good. I'm doing good. I'm here with the podcast, Gentleman Style Podcast Apparel, rocking it out. But I love what I do, if you can't tell. I love this. And you are doing this full-time as an entrepreneur, full-time blogger, YouTuber, and you are killing the game, sir. So I just have to ask, before we get into the tea, the sauce of how you did it, <laughs> what what was the big push um besides you know nobody likes their job what pushed you to become a full-time blogger entrepreneur yeah yeah i like how you say the uh no one likes their job you know it's, it's actually very rare to find someone who actually does enjoy their job but uh for the most part you know i was kind of in that in the same environment as well you know working 12 15 hour days you know being gone from early in the morning to late at night and it was a grind. But, you know, I'm the kind of person that's always had a job, you know, since I was like 16, 15 years old. And I've always had some type of steady income coming in. But a lot of things change when family becomes involved, a wife and then I'll eventually a son. And that's really what what you, you mentioned, the big push. That was like a monumental push. Right. Because uh, pretty much it was just me and my wife in the very beginning. You know, we had jobs. Uh, we used to call them J.O.B.s or just over broke type jobs. And that's how they felt, because we just we're just kind of just staying above water barely. And we, uh, you know, we always had some type of entrepreneur mindset. I'm, I'm kind of a serial entrepreneur, but not much of it really justified the amount of time that I was putting into it versus the amount of money that was coming in. So I tried a whole bunch of stuff and a lot of it didn't work. But then all of a sudden we found out that we were pregnant with our first son. And when he was on his way, my wife sat me down and said, hey, I would like to stay from home, uh, work from home or not or not even work from home. Just really you know, quit my job so I can take care of him to give him more uh, mommy time and uh, mommy care versus daycare, you know? So uh, I remember thinking like, can't afford this, like not even close. You got to at least work part time. How are we going to do this? And she sat me down, looked me in the eye and was basically saying, you need to figure this out. So uh, I kind of had to put on my big boy pants like overnight right there. So I did what most people do. I went online and started Googling how to make money online. And 
gosh, that's like a cesspool, you know, to be honest, because there are so many things that, you know, that, that you can do, like surveys and micro jobs and a whole bunch of stuff that really just doesn't make enough money for the amount of time that you need to invest in it. But I eventually stumbled across uh, blogging and affiliate marketing. And really from there, the rest is history. I love that. And that's so unique. And, and kudos to your wife and you. To, first off, kudos to you for taking the step and taking the initiative as a father, as a husband, to really push and push through. Um, ladies, stop holding the guns to your husband's heads. No, I'm just kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Right? It's okay. But you needed that, right? You needed that push because I'm sure, like most entrepreneurs, you don't have a regret. You don't regret any of it. And so you, you your wife sat you down and you took the leap. And she 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 pushed you and motivated you and encouraged you to allow your family to take things to the next level. And you mentioned yeah. several niches that you did. How many exactly businesses did you try before settling on a niche and blogging and then ultimately discovering affiliate marketing and blogging? How many actual businesses did you try? Man, I've been a serial entrepreneur, like I mentioned before, since I was like eight you know, or younger. Um, I was the kind of guy who like we would sell candy or something and, you know, they would give us the candy and then we'd have to sell it for like two or three dollars or whatever. But I would go to door uh, door to door and sell it for like four dollars or five dollars and then kind of pocket the rest. I don't know how ethical that was. And I guess I don't really recommend anyone do that today. But that's what I was doing at the time. And I was able to make a few extra bucks from doing that. But even since then, once I, you know, became a little more of age, uh, maybe, you know, around 18, 19 in college and everything, you know, I started doing other things like I was buying and selling uh, Lacosta shirts online. I had like an overseas retailer that would create them. And then I turn around and try to sell them on eBay. I used to buy and sell computers, um, just trying to find ways to flip them. And I would always run into roadblocks because, you know, PayPal fees and eBay fees and everything would eat all of my profit margin and it wouldn't justify continuing to work with it. Um, I tried to buy, uh, uh, buy and sell iPhones. And this is a terrible story there. I remember... I found this overseas retailer that promised me that he was going to give me iPhones at like 200 bucks each. And when I got them, they were actually M phones. And you can even look them up today. Uh, they're not worth the 800 or so dollars that iPhones were worth at the time. And uh, I ended up losing money on that deal. But yeah, I've done quite a few things. Um, I even moonlight as a DJ, anniversary parties, you know, just a, a club every now and then. You know, I was doing all types of things, but. I really believe that a lot of it didn't work out for me because I didn't have the right motivation. When I had the right motivation behind uh, wanting to figure out affiliate marketing and blogging, I had my back against the wall and I had to figure it out. Absolutely. And he also he also is a bartender, ladies and gentlemen. He also bartends <laughs> on nights and weekends in between everything else he's doing. He's he's a full part time um, DJ or blogger. My goodness, you've had a, a very unique time a very unique experience um what is the difference help me understand this because i think a lot of us mess this up what is the actual difference between blogging and podcasting or are they the same thing is a blog a podcast is a podcast a blog um is are they what's, what's the difference yeah, they're both forms of creating content online, and you really are appealing to whatever different types of people like to consume content. If you want like to listen to it, like we're doing on the podcast, you know, I have a podcast, the Blogger Evolution Podcast, if you don't mind my gratuitous plug. But um, yeah, so I have a podcast. So for people who just want to listen to things, they want to listen to interviews about people who uh, have done what they're trying to do. It's very inspirational to get you to keep going and see that you're not alone because in this whole digital world, it's tough. You know, it is tough trying to do stuff because you're kind of just sitting in front of a computer all day. Your friends and family are probably looking at you and thinking, what is it that you're doing? You know, and are you actually doing anything? And because there's a, a long time between creation of the content to the point to where you're actually making decent money with it, that it gets kind of crazy. But essentially, I guess it just depends on what you like to do what you feel you can do consistently, and then you would just jump into either one. So podcasting is more of a, you know, multimedia, you're listening, and you normally can do it while you're working out or walking. Blogging is more sitting in front of a computer and, and typing your way to freedom is what I used to say. And doing that kind of thing, um, you just have to work with what works best for what you like to do and enjoy. Chris Miles, y'all, I told y'all, spilling the tea 
on Gentleman Style Podcast show today. And like I said, you can't get this content anywhere except on his YouTube channel. But right now, the only way you can get it is the exclusive inside sneak peek on Gentleman Style Podcast show. And we are on all social media platforms where you can listen to or watch your favorite podcast. We're on Apple, iTunes, iHeartRadio, Spotify, Google, Facebook, YouTube, and anywhere you get your social media platform from. Another round of applause for Mr. Miles, y'all. This is dope. I didn't realize there were so many people here, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Love it. it's the subliminal audience. Is the is the magic audience behind the scenes? Is the behind the scenes audience? Ah, uh-huh, I got you. I got you. <laughs> Sir, I, I want to ask the question, the really, really amazing question, because you have an incredible mind. You could do literally anything. What what did you do in corporate America, and how has that helped you as an entrepreneur today? Yeah, so I I um I went to college. I went to LSU, you know, in the South, and uh, whoop, whoop. yeah, there you go. Like when I was there, um, I started in electrical engineering, and I remember the degree audits for both were pretty similar for electrical engineering and computer engineering. So I tried to do a double, you know, and that's what I was going to do. I went with it, and I realized that I had to study a lot more than I used to, <laughs> even when I was in high school, and um. And I reached a, a point one time where I was just like, you know what, I, I, I don't want to be here anymore. You know, I was so tired of school at, at, the, at the time. But um, I went ahead and I would talk to one of my counselors and they basically I basically told them, look at my, the classes that I've taken so far. What's going to get me out of here the fastest? You know, and they pretty much gave me um, uh, communications was one of the degrees that that was there. I went ahead and and, and took advantage of it. I did a minor in what they called ISDS at the time, which is Information Systems and Decision Sciences. It's basically like a low-level IT type degree. So that was my minor pretty much. Um, And then I ended up getting a job at a bank. And so communications was really one thing that I was really good at is breaking things down, making things very simple for people to understand. So when I got to the bank, I was basically like a trainer. Um, I would take, you know, pretty complicated concepts and then break them down so that new hires could understand them pretty uh, easily. And I would create procedures and and this and that and uh, just trying to make things nice and simple. And I got pretty good at it and did it for about 10 years. Um, But then I realized that I should be doing this kind of stuff for myself. You know, I, I got tired of creating all of these things just to give it to the business. And now I'm on to the next task, you know, and they could do that because they're paying me. Right. And that makes sense. I was providing them, you know, a service, but uh, wouldn't it be nicer if I can create something for myself, take complicated concepts of maybe someone trying to learn how to blog or how to be on YouTube or do a podcast, break it down to a simplest form so that people could be, uh, you know, a little more self-sufficient, have the opportunity to see that you can make money elsewhere other than just an employer. And when I had that realization, that was a light bulb moment for me. So that's what I try to do now is give other people that same realization that you can create your own income. You just got to find something that you like to do and do it. Mic drop. That's a mic drop moment. Mic drop moment. So, I want to get to the T. I want to get to, I, I want you to hold that thought because I okay. really want to dive deep because that's scary for a lot of people to take the jump, to take the leap of faith and completely commit to the thing, commit to the podcast, commit to whatever it is your heart desire is. And so I want to hold that thought. We have to pay some bills, y'all. We got we to gotta go to a quick commercial break. We'll be right, right back. Stay tuned. Stay with us. Here we If you're looking for a reliable, professional trucking and logistics service, you've come to the right place. Musa Trucking is a veteran-owned and operated premier transportation provider that can help with all of your trucking and logistics needs. Musa is revolutionizing the trucking industry through strategic partnerships, the development of core personnel, and the use of cutting-edge technology. Our inventory system ensures that cargo ends up divided into the right trucks and reaching the correct destination. Our drivers are dedicated to transporting goods efficiently and safely. Contact us today to get started by visiting the website on the screen or by calling 757-756-5246. We 
are back to the Gentleman Style Podcast show. And if you missed it, we have the incredible Mr. Chris Miles on the Gentleman Style Podcast show spilling the absolute tea on how he left his job, jobs, uh, <laughs> doing several things, doing numerous things, and, 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 and a degree. He has an incredible mind. He has IT experience, which is a huge, huge moneymaker. And he left that and went full-time into blogging and entrepreneurship. And he shared some of that tea um, previously. If you missed that, go back, scroll back, and check him out. You won't want to miss what he has to share today. So, Mr. Chris, how yes, well, you teach to this, you coach to this, how can someone, what steps should someone do prior to taking that leap of faith and going into possibly what it is they love to do, whether it be podcasting, blogging, um, bartending, DJing. I mean, <laughs> what is it that someone needs to do? What steps should they take? Yeah, so it, it really, the internet has really made the world a lot smaller. You know, when breaking news happens in Australia, we find out about it within seconds, you know? And because of that kind of thing, because the world is a lot smaller, the uh, everything is on a more even playing field. So I'll just give you an example. When COVID had just started and everything had been locked down, even, you know, these big television show hosts who had these late night TV shows and everything, they didn't they, they didn't know what to do at this point because they had they couldn't have a live studio audience. So what they did is they jumped on YouTube and started creating content on there. And if you go back and watch when a few of those guys were first getting started. It was terrible because they didn't understand how to create content that kept people watching, that didn't have a laugh track in the background, that didn't have a live studio audience. It was bad. Now, after about a year or two, they started getting used to it. The edits got better and they worked out with it. But for that little bit amount of time, I knew more than what they did. And they're these millionaire you know, television personalities. So a lot of times when we are creating content online, we just got to put our minds to it and figure out what keeps people interested. And usually what keeps people interested is a good story. If you can get a good story off, regardless of if you're blogging, if you're doing podcasting or YouTube or, or whatever, you're usually going to be able to keep people's attention. When you keep people's attention, people are going to remember you for whatever it is you happen to be doing or promoting. And at that point, you can sell somebody something. And if you sell someone something, that's when you can make some money back. Love it. Love it. Love it. I, I want to talk about something that you teach on your YouTube channel that I was watching a little bit of. Um, you teach people how to um, create an income outside of that nine to five. Right. Yeah. And so one of the things that you talk about is website. Um, I forget this it's website investing. What is that specifically? And can you, can you share, can you talk about that? Yeah, for sure. So website investing is this real cool thing that even after a year of blogging, I never really realized that this, uh, industry, I guess you could say even existed. So when you are buying, you know, people buy and sell businesses all the time. You know, if you have an asset that generates revenue, that generates income or whatever it happens to be, you can sell that to somebody else who would like to maybe temporarily park some money somewhere. Or if they want to buy that business, now they're running it. And then now they're being able to, you know, get the revenue and the income, you know, each and every month. That same principle applies whether it's a brick and mortar or an online business. So what I started doing was creating blogs online on different types of topics, whether it was golf or coffee or uh, uh, match cards or whatever, you know, just depending on whatever you're really into, chances are you can find a way to monetize it online and dial in to people who are also interested in that same topic and maybe they would buy something. So again, using golf as an example, if I have a uh, golf blog and I write an article about the seven best drivers you know in 2022 then someone who might be just getting into golfing might search that find my website and then as i am recommending different types of uh, uh drivers that i've probably used and i can give a good you know information about how good this web how good this driver is if they click on the link on that blog and go buy it i get a commission through affiliate marketing and that's how the uh, uh the the income generation is there. So once you can do that consistently by getting traffic from the biggest website in the world, which is Google, then uh, it gets very, very consistent. And that's really the beauty of it all. Um, and the traffic that you're getting very consistently to your site 
it turns into revenue. So because of that, you have this living, breathing website that's generating an income that's pretty consistent month after month. So once you have this asset that's creating uh, income, you now can sell that to somebody else based on the amount of money it makes per month. So I uh, hope I'm not getting too long winded for you, but You're good. let's just say you have a website that makes $1,000 a month. That website is worth anywhere between thirty and fifty thousand dollars, and that's you know pretty awesome. If you got that site up to three thousand dollars a month, that site's worth anywhere from ninety to one hundred and ten thousand dollars. And you know once you learn that skill of being able to create a blog and get it generating revenue, which isn't super difficult to do, but if you have the right process, it's not too bad. Then within you know six months to a year maybe two years max, you can have an asset that you can turn around and sell for over $100,000. Wow. This is just like, so this is just like, like, like real estate. This is digital, it's digital real, real estate. Yeah. Digital real estate. I love this. I love this. Thank you for sharing that. Thank you for speaking on that. Should people, who do you recommend who should start a blog or who should start a podcast or who should um, start a YouTube channel? What are the types of people that are a good fit for those types of the media industry, let's just say the media um, blogging platforms. Yeah. So what you would really want to do is think about what it is that you enjoy doing and that you will be able to do consistently. All right. So if you like to, to write, then blogging would be your thing. But also, maybe you don't want to be in front of everybody. Maybe you don't want to show your face on YouTube. Maybe you don't think you have this bombastic personality to be able to come through a microphone or something like that. Then probably podcasting wouldn't be your thing either. Um, if, if you like to kind of just stay behind the scenes, you know, type something out there, put it out there as a blog and be able to make some money with it, whether it's through ads or affiliate marketing, blogging would be perfect for you. If you don't mind kind of putting your face out there and just being energetic and coming through and teaching people a certain thing about a topic, then YouTube would probably be best for you. YouTube and podcasting are kind of hand in hand. It's faster to grow on YouTube for sure. But podcasting, you're going to create better relationships with people because you're basically in someone's ear for 45 minutes. And uh, by doing that, you can create a really good rapport with people and they trust you. And once they trust you, then hopefully they'll buy something from you. Makes sense. Makes sense. What do you have coming down the pipeline? What you got in the works coming down, coming soon? Yeah, so um, I have been over the last maybe year and a half, two years, I have been doing uh, coaching where I've been showing other people how to do the blogging as well. A lot of people sometimes will ask, well, well why is it that you're coaching if it's so great, you know, just just a blog or whatever? And to be honest, you know, I've already made the money. And right now I'm just trying to help other people see the same thing. So that's really what uh, I've been trying to do with the coaching. And we've had some people do some pretty amazing things so far in the program. But anyway, since I mentioned that, it's because I don't really do the coaching too much anymore. <laughs> so since we started the coaching, I was able to create a, uh, a process to where people can just, you know, um, watch the videos in a course. So I created a course and now people can do it there. And now for the most part, I kind of chime in and help people answer questions here or there. But for the most part, everything's there. People have gone through it and it's worked really well. So since I'm now transitioning from the coaching to uh, just kind of promoting, you know, the course itself, I have that kind of on the horizon that I'm going to be looking at over the next probably year or two, trying to get that in a position to where it's more passive than not, you know, have um, a, a virtual assistant or someone being able to help out who also is good at blogging and then try to remove myself from it. Because the whole idea, too, is that, you know, uh, entrepreneurs, you know, usually we're hard workers. You know, we want to get this done, want to get that done. But you got to be careful of constantly working in your business because you don't want to trade a 40 hour a week job for an 80 hour a week job. Right. And that's kind of what entrepreneurship can do to you if you're not careful. So I'm trying to create processes to where I don't have to be 100 percent on it. Instead of working in my business, I'm going to be working on my business and having other things going so then I can be somewhere else doing something else and still uh, generating income. And that's really what the goal is, at least for the next couple of uh, couple of years. Makes sense. Makes sense. Love it. Love it. Love it. How can how can blogging, how can blogging and podcasting be passive? How can people make their blog a passive income source? Yeah. So blogging is a lot easier than podcasting is because you do have to kind of show up like how hard Marcus <laughs> would it be for you to do your podcast if you're not here? You know, you do have to do it. 
It's um, a cardboard cutout of me right here. Exactly. <laughs> and like a little a little tape deck. You just press a button and run and just let it go. <laughs> like Home but, Alone 3. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> so uh, blogging is a little easier to do that because you can teach someone how to write like you. You know, and in most instances, the writers that I hire, they're better writers than I am. So sometimes I feel as though I might be hurting my business <laughs> by writing my own articles. I still write a ton of them, but I don't write as many as I used to. Um, instead of punching out two or three a day at one point, I only punch out maybe one a week, you know, and I'll hire a writer to be able to uh, create the other content for me. So then once you hire a writer, you can also hire an editor. So the writer writes the content, an editor looks at it, they format it in a way to make it nice and readable for the internet, and then they post it on the blog. At that point, all I have to do is come up with the ideas. And then at, once I come up with the ideas, I hand it over to the writer, they write the content, who then sends it to the editor, who then edits and posts it. And all I have to do is the keyword research that might take me an hour, you know, uh, or something like that. And that's a month, you know. I take an hour or two a month, come up with... 20, 30 topic ideas and then ship them off to the writers. So I have a business that's running and it really only requires about two to four hours a month on it, which allows me to be able to work on other things. Other bigger projects. Love exactly. it. Love it. Love it. Woo! Spilling the tea. Sir, this has been impactful and helpful and truly phenomenal. How can, what would you say to that young entrepreneur, that young boy or girl who's interested in starting their first blog, what would you say, what advice would you give to them? Yeah, one thing that was really apparent to me is that I feared regret more than I feared failure. And by doing that, I didn't want to get to a certain part of life and look back and think, man, I wish I would have, I wish I could have or whatever. Um, and by doing that, you know, you got to be, you know, if you're a little risk averse, then yeah, it's going to, it might be a little taxing on you, but no risk, no reward. And I figured at the end of the day, let me quit the job and just see what happens. Let's try it for a year. That was four years later. And we, we're still here going strong. Or I could have still been cooped up in an office 15 hours a day and missing my son grow up. And that's what I did not want, you know, so fear regret more than you fear failure and by doing that and keeping that in mind it'll help you take a few extra risk and realize that your time is your most valuable asset like so make sure that you completely take advantage of the time because that's the one thing you can't get back every two years i'm sorry every two weeks you get paid you know maybe you get paid once a week maybe you get paid once a month or whatever you're going to replenish that money every single time but once time is gone time is gone and there's nothing that you can do about it so uh, i would definitely say fear uh, regret more than you fear failure. Mm. Mic drop, mic drop. I want to give him another mic, not the mic. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> love it, love it, love it. How can my audience connect with you? How can we learn more on what you're doing? Because you are a movement, sir, and the train has left the station. But it's not on. T not too late to get on board. No, no, it's not too late at all. I would definitely recommend it. anyone check me out on uh, the Blogger Revolution podcast. You're already listening to a podcast, so it shouldn't be too hard for you to go over. Search uh, a Blogger Evolution or Benji's Dad. That's me. That's that's the name, one of the names of the businesses. And once you find it, subscribe, and then you're going to be ready there. Otherwise, you can also catch me um, on the YouTube channel where I post a lot of the same things, but get a little more in-depth sometimes. And on um, Instagram, at Chris Miles Official. Love it, love it, love it. Connect, connect, connect. We have to support this man and support the train he's moving on. And he's showing us, he's literally showing us that you can do it too. So check this out. Uh, so, Mr. Chris, thank you for taking time out of your busy day to give back in this way. This is truly phenomenal. I'm glad to have you on the show, brother. I appreciate it. I love it when our men are doing well and they're able to share and give back in this way. So thank you, brother, for doing what you do. Man, thank you for having the platform, man, and being able to come on here and, and enjoy. You're, you're a gracious host, man. I appreciate the time. Absolutely. It's my pleasure. My pleasure. And thank you all for tuning in to the Gentleman Style Podcast Show. <laughs> podcast i went french right there podcast show so thank you all for tuning in we love you but we gotta let mr miles go he has a company to run several companies to run and many more businesses to to, to start and teach and coach and mentor so thank you all for tuning in like i end every show take care of your friends take care of your family and always always 
take care of business. This is Marcus Norman, your favorite gentleman, and Mr. Chris Miles here on the Gentleman Style Podcast Show. Signing off. Love you guys. Bye. Bye.